But I think the greatest contribution that he made uh, outside of uh, the Broadway musical was his Victory at Sea from 1952, which was a documentary on uh, World War II. And um, just, to, uh, just to kind of show off a little bit, uh, my dad is a big fan. And uh, he bought this record uh, when it was new. This is Victory at Sea, Volume 2. And he about wore it out. But there are some great, there's a great little book in here with some pictures. I mean, this is how things used to be, remember? Record albums uh, used to come with, with information in them that you could read translations. And, um, you know, um, but RCA Victor, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a classic, it's a keeper. So I, I think a, a lot of people were like my dad, you know, this was their introduction to classical music. Watching this documentary, which aired, actually came into people's homes through television, which was a relatively new, you know, thing going on. Um, uh, but also to, just to go to go to see it in local theaters, and you could go see all the different episodes. That people were pulled into this. This was compelling to watch, and the music is also compelling. So as we listen to this example and and watch, listen and watch this example. Listen to how the music is designed to evoke the drama uh, of being on the sea and all the and being in the middle of World War II. Um, I think it's 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 quite quite brilliant. Brilliant music. Some of the greatest music that Richard Rogers actually composed was in this film. And keep in mind that he is basically like writing the themes. It was orchestrated by Robert Russell Bennett, who was a very notable, uh, very, very notable um, uh, arranger of the time um, and orchestrator, um, which I think is what allowed this machine to kind of happen. Rogers is probably submitting piano recordings uh, to, uh, to him and then he's orchestrating these. But there's some brilliant, brilliant musical writing that I think we can still recognize and identify with. I guess this yeah, aired on Sunday nights on NBC. And, uh, and, and, not, and not only did a lot of, I mean, a lot of America tuned into this. Um, you know, um, and, and, and look at those, uh, think of, of, of this time period, what the, the quality of the TVs were like. And you're seeing, you know, the ocean and, scary Germans and, you know, and Japanese too, and, you know, and just all the, all the stuff, the, the war, the war as it was, it really wasn't propaganda because the, the war was over. It, it really was a, a, a documentation of, but for a lot of people, remember that Fantasia was 1940. So this is quite a few years after Fantasia. Fantasia was a lot of people's introduction to classical music. And it was actual excerpts of classical music. Beethoven, Tchaikovsky, Stravinsky, um, you know, um, this was original works. And so what Rogers has done is he's essentially created very singable themes that are being played in the instruments, things that, but, but, but that represent the drama of that setting. It's brilliant, it's brilliantly done. And some, some really amazing music that for a lot of people was a gateway to other classical works by a composer who didn't do a lot of classical writing. He focused on shows. Is that I ironic? I, I don't know, but it makes him significant. 
This was condensed into a film in 1954, by the way, but originally it was 26 30 minute long episodes. The Richard Rogers music is still attainable, accessible, um, uh, you know, tuneful, that it appeals to not just people of one generation, uh, it appeals to, I, I think, I like to think anyone who hears it. Um, I think he's a, he's a brilliant composer and um, deserves greater recognition. I, I mean, he gets a, a, a people, you know, but I, I think he should be um, a greater household name. I think he truly is the most significant Broadway composer. Uh, and, and, and I think you look at things like Victory at Sea and your mind goes, what would have happened if he had composed symphonies and concertos? And, and he didn't, and I'm not judging that in any way, shape, or form, but I, I think those are the things that keep him from being mentioned as really one of the all-time, all-time greats. Uh, Puccini didn't, didn't write symphonies either. Anyway, um, I, I just think he's a fantastic uh, composer, and so is Andrew Lloyd Webber. I think truly, truly wonderful, and to be able to do a class on these two was truly a pleasure.